So anyway, I, I kind of played around for a decade from 2000 to 2010 with this idea, kept putting on races, kept losing money. It was kind of a, it was a, ho a painful hobby. In 2010, I get the idea, um, sitting around a kitchen table or whatever, you know what, let's, let's, um, let's shorten the length of some of the races we're doing. Rather than making them 500 mile events, Let's, let's get them down to an hour, digestible, you know, an hour, three hours, seven hour type events. Let's call it Spartan. Um, it was a tough one to get my head around because here I was, I was doing those big events. And so was I diluting uh, what I was interested in <clears throat> by shortening them? And so I had to make sure it remained authentic. Anyway, Spartan was born. 700 people showed up to the first event. Doesn't sound like a lot. But compared to getting seven people to come do some of the crazy stuff I was doing, 700 is a big number. So from 700, we went to like 1,200, 1,500. By the way, I needed 3,000, 4,000 to break even. So I was still losing money. Like many of the entrepreneurs watching this and listening to this, what ended up happening, which is a good thing, was I got so deep into this. I spent so much money. Um, because I lost money the first race, I lost money the second race. I'd already lost money for a decade with Peak, um, that I had no choice but to make it work. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang a left turn here, I'm trying to get it to make a little less noise. Um, I'm gonna hang a left turn here on what I'm explaining to you. I, I um, in Vermont, I ended up uh, investing in a bunch of businesses in Vermont: a bed and breakfast, a general store, a farm. And I had the vision before Spartan was born, born that I was going to find young entrepreneurs like the people listening to this show, and I was going to provide them something I didn't have when I was building my business. I didn't have financial support. I didn't have somebody there like a safety net. And so I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this general store completely built out, inventory in, and I'm going to go find a couple of young entrepreneurs that are dying to own a general store in Vermont. It's crazy as that sounds. And I'm going to take away all the pressure of the mortgage payments and all the things I had. I'm going to do the same thing on the farm. I'm going to buy the cows, the tractor, everything's paid for. Find a couple of young farmers that want to do rotational farming, do some good in the world, take away all that pressure. They're going to be successful. I'm going to do the same thing with bed and breakfast. What I found, this is really interesting for your audience, what I found, they all failed. Now you say to yourself, it's counterintuitive. How could they fail if they had no mortgage payments, everything was taken care of? That's exactly why they failed. They failed because I think, I think the reason we succeed in business is because we have to. We have no choice. Our back's against the wall. We mortgaged our house. We sold our wife. We did whatever we had to do to get this business off the ground. You have no choice but to succeed. And it's only then, I think, that you succeed. And that's what happened to me in Spartan. Here I was, 30 years in to saving money and building a, a nest egg so that I could have a family on a farm and just kind of coast downhill the, the latter part of my life and I found myself after two years blowing most of the money on this thing called Spartan and I was so hooked financially and so indebted and so committed uh, I had no choice I got to make this work and so now we're six years in and we're making it work because um, I got no choice so I, you know I wish it was a more I wish it was a more glamorous story than that I wish I could say I was so smart and had the foresight. No, I was so freaking committed. I invested so much money. We're going to make this work.